Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek. It's your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we've got all the usual suspects. I'm just going to go through really quickly. We've got the Zen Master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Mike Zeno. We've got Dude Buddy, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. We've got the Technician, Eric Peterson. We've got putting in our reps, Taria Harris. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tay Litchfield. And of course, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, investorninjas.com. Learn anything and anything. So we've got a great topic. And I love the fact that I'm just speeding through this intro. There's not even, we're not even doing the pleasantries like, how are you today? We're just going right into it. What do you think, Tria? Kaizen, right? Continuous improvement. I love it. Take that, dear listener, who likes to fast forward three minutes. We're getting right into it. You're going to miss stuff. <laughs> All right, so our topic today is from last week. We were talking about wholesaling properties. And then Mike Zano brought up a really good point. So what is the decision matrix or the heuristic? How do you decide when is it time if you're trying to sell a property retail, when do you downshift and just wholesale it? Take that the, the quick nickel over the slow dime and then redeploy that capital into something else that maybe would sell for a higher price or sell quicker at a retail level. So that is today's topic. Mike Zano, let's just start with you, our resident wholesaler. So I think something that can be misinterpreted and, and sort of is that people think, well, you, you know, you can't sell the property, so go wholesale it, right? Um, and so is, is it in fact uh, an occurrence where you know, the properties that people are wholesaling are properties that they couldn't move and they're just trying to off them. And so that, that could be an assumption that people make. And that's not this, that's not what I do, but I'm the way that, you know, you, you could think that, right? Like, look at, I, I can't sell this property. Um, I'm just going to wholesale it and let somebody else deal with the quote unquote problem. And, um, but I don't, that's not how I approach it. I just, you know, I think that sometimes people feel that could be the case, right? But I personally have certain areas that I just designate as wholesale. And so in my mind, this is a wholesale area. It's not that it wouldn't be a great retail area. It's just not my retail area. I, I, I have my buyers list and all that built up for certain areas. And there's other areas that I haven't put the time in to build a buyers list, but I did put the time in to build a wholesale buyers list. And those people are happy in those areas. So I think to start off with, I, my, my opening statement, <laughs> opening, it's like it's a court case here. My opening statement is that I have designated areas that I'd like to wholesale. And others oh, I read. All right. Scott Bossman, would you like to object? <laughs> no, uh, really no objections, Your Honor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I would agree with Mike. Uh, I don't typically think of it as, okay, I failed to, I failed to retail this. I'm going to go wholesale it. I use wholesaling uh, in a couple different ways. I mean, let's say my inventory is getting really high. Um, and I don't know. Uh, Marketing, there's a little bit of backlog in marketing. It might be a good time to wholesale some properties and infuse some cash back into your business. I know early on, um, I think if I had done more of that, uh, it would have. I didn't wholesale a lot early on. We just didn't talk about it as much. Uh, I think it would have grown my business a little bit more quickly. Honestly, I would have been able to move through more properties. Um, so I think it's valuable in that regard. Now a lot of people take kind of a hybrid approach. They do a little bit of this. You know, they do a little bit of wholesale, a little bit of retail, a little bit of terms. Uh, so I think that's helpful. Um, we wholesale after defaults sometimes. I've had properties that default once, twice, three times. And I mean, I'll admit it, I might get sick of that property. Well, listen, I made my money on it. I'm going to wholesale it. I'm going to wholesale it for a really competitive price. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I talked to my wife, Erin, about wholesaling every year in December. Uh, Christmas used to be stressful like five, six years ago, paying for gifts and that type of thing. Now we have like this December wholesale thing. Like, let's go out and wholesale some properties, honey, and pay for Christmas. So maybe you have some type of strategy like that in your business, which we we employ once or twice a year. That that's that that's really interesting. Uh, I have a lot of thoughts about it, but uh -oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve them for Taria putting in, in the reps, Harris. 
Um, I, I do want to touch on what Mike Zeno said. I think there is this notion that you're getting rid of the crappy properties, right? So when you look for a wholesale property, they're crappy. Um, when we first started off our business, the first, I don't know, 15, 20 properties were wholesale. We hold, we, we needed the capital to put back into the business, number one. Um, but as we were wholesaling them, we were having a hard time getting rid of them. Our marketing wasn't quite where it needed to be but we were wholesaling them to people who were just killing it in the area. So sometimes even a property that we just couldn't move in a certain area, someone else is looking for and they have buyers lined up for it. Now we take the approach of really it's out of necessity if our capital is getting a little low and we have properties that we've had for a while and we're just having a hard time getting rid of, um, we'll offer them up for wholesale. But we have people reach out to us also just on a whim. Hey, I saw that property on your website. Do you want to wholesale it? Or I saw it on Landmoto. Do you want to wholesale it? And sometimes we look at, again, our capital. And if we need it, we wholesale it. So I don't know if we really have a strategy other than, well, we need the money. <laughs> so we wholesale. <laughs> <laughs> it's Landon, Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> exactly. Keeping up with the Bossmans. <laughs> um. Eric Peterson, the technician, what are your thoughts? I think wholesaling is a, is a good strategy for, for raising capital in your business. Um, a lot of times in working with our students, they will come to a point where maybe capital is getting a little tight. They've got a bunch of inventory. Maybe sales are slower than they expected. And often it turns into a, a good time to start talking about maybe wholesaling some of those off, recoup some capital, redeploy it in your business, um, buy some different property, get something different and, uh, and get back after it. Sometimes uh, it could just be that you started in a certain county and for whatever reason, you didn't connect with that county. And therefore, you know, maybe you're moving on to a different county and it might be a good time to to go ahead and wholesale that property off so you can have capital to to deploy in this new county so you know much like everybody said i there's many different reasons to wholesale um and i think depending where you are in the business those will vary but uh you know like mike started off saying a lot of people will have an area that they just buy land in with the intention to wholesale there's nothing wrong with that either. All right. All right. Um, Tay Litchfield. You know, this is an interesting question because I just got done with a uh, flight school VIP call and uh, the guy was on the call with said to me, Tate, at what point do you wholesale a property? After how many days of it sitting on the inventory shelf do you just decide, you know what, it's time for it to go? And I said, you know, honestly, I don't have a deadline because if I bought it right for today's price price, you know, at today's pricing, and I'm comfortable with that. And it takes me 12 months to sell it. Sure, it's not ideal. But am I stressing? No. And the reason I'm not stressing is because this isn't a hobby for me. Right? It's not a game. And if it takes me to sell it in, you know, 12 months, or even 18 months, that's okay, because I'm still making such a great return on my investment, that I'm okay waiting for those deals. It's worth it for me. So yeah, ideally, I want to sell all of my properties in 60 months or less. But when you buy 10 to 20 properties a month, you inevitably will have some that are less desirable than others. That doesn't prevent me from keeping you know, my nose to the grindstone and keeping buying. No, I keep going through the process because at some point, I know that property will sell. Everything sells. So yeah, there's certain strategies that people use all the time for wholesaling. But I don't have a hard line drawn in the sand that says, oh, it's day 61 clean it out, move it, get rid of it, because I believe in what I buy. And if I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't have bought it in the first place. I don't know. Is I, that, I like is that. that. Is that fair? I, I think it's fair. Um, and I love the flexibility of it as well. Yeah. So um, I have a feeling, though, the irascible Scott Todd might have a, a different take. Isn't that Eric you mean? Yeah, I thought Eric was Eric, irascible. Eric was irascible, but you know the way we started this this podcast off, oh, considering the new the okay. new ear, we'll we'll call it an earbud for you. All right, 
It is an earbud. It is. It is. It's a, it's okay, Mark. It's all right. I know you raced out and ordered one, so it's all right. It's justification I, that you did. I ordered I ordered a black one, not a clear okay. one. Okay, all right. Well, to each his own. Um, when they told me that you couldn't see it, I couldn't see it on the guy, but then I put it on my ear, and I'm like, well, I don't have any hair covering the ear, so that might be the problem. But that's a different story. So I think I think what everybody said is pretty – pretty accurate because ultimately what happens is a lot of times when people start this business, they, they want to have like this hardcore formula that says, I've held this for 61 days. It's out of here. And I don't, I really don't do that either. And I, I think that like what Scott was talking about, about the, the or I'm sorry, what Mike Zeno was talking about, about how people think, like, Oh, well, it's just a junk property that someone else can't sell. I'm out. I'm not going to do it. I think that what happens is that there's so many different reasons why people will, will wholesale land. I agree with Scott Bossman. Sometimes I'll wholesale land because honestly, it's something I've had. I've sold it multiple times on terms. And I'm like, you know what? My cost basis is down there. I can still make a nice pop today. And I might I might have a wholesale package and I, you know, make make thirty thousand dollars on it or you know, something like that. Well, that's a nice that's a nice payday if you want to go do something. You want a nice vacation? You got it. Now, does that mean that I could I could have held on? Should I have held on to the properties and sold them and still cashed out? Maybe it just depends on on your situation, right? Like you're in a business. And so ultimately you have to look at this. The way I think about land a lot is I think a lot has to do with like my background with the rental car business. And in the rental car business, you would buy a car you would rent that car out and at some point in the future you would sell that car now you would sell that car either to a retail buyer like you know through a used car sales lot or an auction or you would basically just get rid of it but what you would do is obviously if there was a profit you made the profit and that made for some good years when the used car market was upside down and you sold uh you sold them it wasn't great years but i tend to think about this a lot like you know at some point in time, I'm going to just get it off my inventory. Maybe my focus shift. Maybe, you know, when I started, and I did, when I started, I was in one state, heavily in one state, and I kind of migrated a little bit to another state where I do a lot of my deals. And so it's got less attention out there. Because remember, every time you move to another county, every time you work in another county, you're building a whole new buyer's list. Your, your customers do not, you know, transcend. It's, it's, a, it's like a separate business. So someone that's like, oh, I'm working in three, five different counties. That means you're technically operating in a way three to five different uh, businesses because you got to keep marketing each of these little areas. And at times I look at them like, just get rid of them. I want to focus over here. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. I, I love what everyone said. And um, Scott, I don't know when you gave that, that tip of uh, the psychology of money. Was that... A couple oh, weeks ago or last week. So I'm, I'm reading this book. And, and honestly, it's my favorite book of 2021 um, by far. So it's, it's one of those books I think I could just read over and over again. There's just so much wisdom in it. And so many, there's things in there that you kind of know intuitively, but there's other things that just the way he writes it and, and, and describes it and tells the stories. But to Scott Bossman's point, there's a, there's a chapter in The Psychology of Money of rational versus reasonable. And we aren't constantly, we're, we're, we're not rational all the time. So, you know, he makes the example of money in the bank at 0% interest is not rational, right? But it certainly is reasonable because, you, you know, we have an uncertain future. You want to have liquidity. You want to have some money in the bank, even though from a purely financial standpoint, it's not rational. And to Scott Boston's point, I, I would say that, you know, sometimes I would look at people and say, oh, should I wholesale it? I would look at it from a rational lens. And I wasn't being reasonable. And, and I'm, you know, uh, man enough to admit, like, I think my thinking was flawed. And I think some of the times that, um, if I could go back, I, I would want to be more reasonable and actually put, take into account what would be best 
for that person emotionally at that time in their business so they could move forward faster as opposed to the most rational way to maximize profit in, in retail. So my heuristic used to be, if the property hasn't sold in 30 days, something's got to change, right? I want to give the market what it wants. And I still believe in that. But as far as wholesale retail goes, I thought what everybody said is, is great. I wouldn't add anything to it except my own flawed logic of, of seeing the world in, in a rational lens versus a reasonable lens and being having that flexibility, like what Tate was saying, of, of, of selling it or giving the market what it wants and, and just being flexible. So um, I, I don't really have anything else to add except that it, it really brought to my attention um, uh, this bias I think I had mentally of, you know, I have way prefer retail or land arb over wholesale. And yet, if I needed money for Christmas, nothing wrong with wholesaling some property quick and, and not having, and like, you know, that peace of mind is priceless, I would say. To know that, okay, I've got this piece of inventory, I can sell it, I can buy something with it that's gonna, you know, create a lasting memory with my family for as long as I live. Nothing wrong with it. Where I think if you asked me this a year or two ago, I'd be like, no, you've got money for gifts. Like, no, sell that thing retail. What do you think, Tate Litchfield? I like it, man. I mean, I do it all the time, right? If I want to go out and make a home improvement or, you know, go on vacation, it's like, how much is it going to cost? And when is that vacation? Oh, it's four months from now and it's going to cost me X? No problem. I'm going to go out and specifically purchase properties with the intent of flipping them for my vacation. I mean, you know, Mike Zano did this, right? Didn't you guys just go to like a family vacation where you, you footed the whole bill just by deciding to focus and flip properties? And that's probably worth a ton to you, right? In your family, those memories, they're worth far more than 20 lots and, you know, in inventory. I don't know. I, I, I see a benefit to it. And like you said, it's all about flexibility. That's what matters. Right, right. Drew, do you ever get in that mindset of rational versus reasonable where you're like, well, we got to maximize yield on this. Um, you know, we'll hold it longer. Yeah. You do get in that? Say yeah. that one more time, Mark. Like that, ra that ration, like being hyper rational versus just reasonable with your inventory. We're like, oh, no, yeah. Landon, we're not, we're not, we're holding on to that. We can, we can, you know, yes, we can get yes. way more for it. And he and I you balance each other. I think I'm more rational. He's more reasonable. So it, somewhere in the middle is a, a good balance. Yeah. Eric Peterson, how about you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that um, one area that that can pop up for a lot of people is just, you know, say you bought a property, maybe not ideally, and you paid a little bit too much for it. You know, it's, it's easy to say, well, I can't wholesale it because then I'd have to take a loss of $100 or something, right? Or, you know, I just hang on to it and just try to retail the thing until it finally sells, you know? And I don't know that there's a right answer, but sometimes it might be more reasonable to just get it out of inventory and just move on, you know? But I mean, it's also okay to hold it and, and sell it for retail too. I don't, I don't think there's a wrong answer, but um, yeah. Right, and Scott's hot from a coaching perspective. You got, a, you got you know, a flight school class. How, how important do you think is confidence as far as moving forward in that business and just going full cycle, whether you sell it wholesale, retail, or a land arb. Yeah, I, I think that I think that confidence and having some success is, is so important because when you've done it one time, you've just passed by the biggest hurdle there is, which is your brain telling you you can't do it. So the minute that you make a sale, I don't care if it's wholesale, retail, all of a sudden you're like, I can do this. I got this. I see 
And then as you go down the path, more and more will come to it. Mark, um, actually in the last couple of days had someone in my, my family who they were kind of feeling defeated. You know, like they, they, were, they were hitting a roadblock, they were feeling defeated, they didn't know forward. And you could just look at them and see like from the fa facial expressions, whatever, that they were like, they were just holding on, but they weren't necessarily like excited. And then just today they went and they did something that gave them a small success, small success. And you know what? When they told me what they'd done, like, this is what I did. And I'm like, yeah. All of a sudden their eyes lit up. They got a bigger smile and that success will lead to more success because you want to go back to, to what, how you feel right now. And if you're feeling good about making money, you're going to go make some more money and then you're going to make more money and then it becomes addictive. You just want to keep going. And that's, that's honestly why in flight school, I tell everybody, look, I don't care if you, if you have to go buy land wholesale to get your first property or you get it from your mailing or vice versa. If you can sell a property wholesale, do it. I don't care if you make 200 bucks, because guess what? 200 turns into 300 turns into 600. Next thing you know, you got a nice little, uh, nest egg that's growing. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I thought this was a, a good topic. Mike Zano, because you're our resident wholesaler, do you want to have the last word on this? Sure. And I think that something Scott Todd said resonated with me. It made me think of a conversation I had with some, some firefighters whose wives are real estate agents. And I guess there's this practice where like, if I'm here in Massachusetts and there's a Florida property that you can get like a referral fee, you know, you go down and you, and you send a, you know, something, you know, if someone contacts you, they want you to sell it. You could pass it off to another real estate agent. I think thinking of wholesale that way is important because it's like, you know, you don't have buyers down there. Uh, like, it's like if you, like if you had a barbershop, right, you might move different cities and the buyers, you know, your clients will come with you. But if you move to Florida, uh, you know, they're probably not going to come for the haircut, you know, but, um, <sighs> It's probably not going to happen, right? But if you think of these these whole this wholesale process as like a referral, like look at you know that this person has a, I know you Mark have a number of buyers over there in this county, and I happen to upon a property that you know that uh, would work for you. Why not wholesale it to you? You're going to have an easy time moving it. I'm going to make some money, and everybody's happy. Yeah, I mean that's the other sort of hidden benefit of wholesaling is that if you wholesale it to the community you've got a new you know, VIP buyer on your buyer's list. If you wholesale it to someone on the outside on like, let's say Land Moto, you've got another buyer on your buyer's list. And you're gonna have a better and stronger relationship with the person who's already worked with you and you made it easier for them to work with you. Because then long-term, when you do have something you wanna retail, they're probably more likely to work with you again than somebody that they don't know, even if it's a similar property and they know the area, they, they're more likely in this type of transaction to work with someone they've, they already know, oh, okay, this person's going to deed me the property. Everything works out. Taxes are paid. You know, they provided the maps, everything I needed. This is great. You know, I'll, I'll keep going back to that person. So good topic, which leads us to our next topic, the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But Scott Bossman, before you give us that tip, we have to give a shout out to, of course, our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building a passive income. Solve not just your money problems, but your time problems. March 31st is the next flight school. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your flight school Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. He will take you up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently. Oh, and by the way, it ain't gonna cost you nothing. We guarantee it. You're gonna make back that money in cash or terms deals, 180 days or less, guaranteed. Just show us you're following the recipe and it's all good. Learn more, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training, and get on a free call with Scott Bossman or Mike Zeno. Okay, Scott Bossman, what is your tip of the week? All right, I found a cool app this week. <clears throat> it's called Uptime. And uh, basically, 
It uh, gives you five minute knowledge hacks on uh, books, documentaries, courses. It's free. There's some other paid ones out there, but this one is free. And uh, there are a lot of great little five minute uh, knowledge hacks on a lot of different topics. There are classic business books in there. There are new bestsellers. Uh, there, there are things on cryptocurrency. There are things on mindset uh, courses, all sorts of stuff. So if you're looking to maybe pick up a new book and you want to browse a little bit first, I, I like this app. And uh, you can read a summary or you can listen to a five minute uh, summary. She sounds a little Siri-esque, which is a little bit annoying, but just put her on 1.5 speed and, and it'll take you three and a half minutes. So I just downloaded that a few days ago, and I, the first book I read was Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty, and it was really cool because there was actually graphics involved. Yeah. It wasn't like Blinkist. It was, it was, it was, it was like Blink. It was like a little bit nicer than Blinkist. I agree. Which is paid, and this is free. But I think they are going to start charging. Right. It's free right now, and I, I don't know how, that's, how long that's going to last. But Yeah. Scott Todd, what do you think? Good tip? I'm just curious um, that... I think I heard you correct me, and I was just looking at the transcript of this. You did say you liked it because of the illustrations. Like, I thought that was interesting. Like, do you guys pick well, up on that? Mark's well, like looking. Are you reading? Pictures. Are you looking at the pictures? Look, There's look when, you, when, you, when you own a, a Mac, okay, you're the kind of person that appreciates some, some visual beauty, yeah. some elegance, right? Yeah. A nice graphical user interface. You're the kind of person that... While you're reading, you wouldn't mind a, a beautiful graphic that has some nice design to it. But when you have a surface, those things just, what do you care? You're used to eating gruel every day. You don't need to go to a, a nice five-star meal. Yeah. Give me some plain oatmeal. It's fine. It's fuel. It's fuel. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just say this. I'll just leave this for here, Mark. If you really, really appreciate the nice quality images or whatever, then you're really appreciating my video picture. I'm sure it looks great on your Mac. I know it looks stellar on my surface. You know, my left AirPod, I think, just whizzed yeah, one out, unfortunately. There um, you go. Just I can hear your mouth moving, but I can't yeah. really, I have to check the transcript. Anyways, um, Eric Peterson, we haven't had an app in a while. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, you're right. We haven't. It's uh, it's nice to have an app again, actually. Job it not is. Pro, the last one, wasn't Aww. it? I think so. Yeah, no one wants to even touch an app <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah. So look, good on you, Scott Bossman, for going out on a limb there and actually right. giving a really good app recommendation. So, Teria, what are your what are your thoughts? Have you checked it out? I'm so I, I just downloaded it. So I'm going to take a look at it later. Okay. This one looks to be a little more inspirational and encouraging. I think the last one I downloaded, not so much. Okay. Wait a minute. 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 I stand corrected. I've just been alerted. that <laughs> I, I was wrong in my statement. I need to revise this. The last <laughs> app recommendation that we had was not Jotna Pro. <laughs> It was death. Uh, it was Mark's death oh, watch, death hat, the death from a few watch. weeks ago, like that we that we were uh, all punished to with like, hey, you're going to die soon. Remember that whole thing? <laughs> and if not, we should rewind it because that was and Scott Boston, great job on not bringing us all down to like death. You know what? I've recommended that we croak app to friends now. They love it. Five times a day, they get reminded of the, these beautiful quotes of the reminder of the shortness of life and how to be so grateful and to, as, uh, to quote from the Poet Society, to suck the marrow out of life because it's short. Mark. Happier, a happier a day with that app. But no, no, Scott Todd, you mock. Listen, go ahead. Recommending this to... <laughs> The wealth without Wall Street guys that are hoping that you share the world that we're all going to die and we should buy insurance. <laughs> Not necessarily. Not people that are cheering for my demise necessarily. Yes, Joey, mark your man. Look, Re look, Russ and Joey want us to, to live a long, healthy life. But if we don't, 
not so bad for them. Yeah, right. Right? They're covered. Yeah, but they they're covered. But look, not not a bad uh strategy. Because we're all gonna die. Been, but some of us are reminded about it about it more than others. Five times a day. That, that, that's why Taria blocked you. That's why she's not even on the box anymore. She's like, I can't stand the death death mark. Block, block him. Land and make him stop. <laughs> Actually, the last one he posted was really good. That that one was good. It was uh, insightful. That's a, yeah, it I'm, made you think. Tria, I'm getting it. Yeah. Thank you. I get those five think. times a day. I'm going to start sending you guys those more. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're That's good. Right. That, that one was good. We're good, though. We appreciate it. But I think <laughs> she just says no. <laughs> I think maybe once a day. Oh, Mike, like, Mike, stop. Walk. Walking is no. good for you, but should you walk all day? Never stop. Mute him. Mute Mike. We don't want to hear that. You have a button for that, Scott? I do have it. I believe it or not, I do have it. I do have it when I control the meeting. I don't have the button when Mark controls the meeting. But, but I do have, I have a button here that will mute everybody. So, like, if anybody starts talking, I'm just like, nope. Oh my god! You need a button. To I, I, I feel. I feel like this is like devolving in, in, into like the Gong Show, and at some point, Tate's just going to be like <laughs> Gong, and then like I have to leave. Tate doesn't know what the Gong Show is. No, I never heard of it. <laughs> That's true. Oh my god! I was hoping you were going to say it was devolving into Wipeout because that would be awesome, but uh, I'm not sure what the Gong Show is. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them that if hopefully you're getting value from this and our shenanigans. And uh, if you would, it's a big favor, subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're gonna send you the wholetailing course, how to double your money, three days or less for free. So please do that. All right, are, are we good? We're good, Mark. We're good. All right, let's do this. One. Two, three, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Download the WeCro app. I, I, I have no financial incentive actually for the WeCro app. But you know what I do have a financial incentive with? Is getting our mailings down to 65 cents for first class mail. Who's using LG Pass right now? And loving it. Taria, I am. Scott, Mike, Tate. How nice is that? It is great. You, we have, uh, it, is a, it, is, it is absolutely amazing to see how many uh, letters are going out through that API every day. Um, you know, and it, it's cool because the, the integration went fantastic. A little hiccups with some accounts that they're still trying to work on. But beyond that, no deal, uh, no big big issues. I'll tell you the cool thing though, is that the developer, he, he launched it and then he went right to the next topic, which uh, the next piece is just some fine tuning of that, that whole mailing system. But he is working on, a, um, on an integrated, right there on the dashboard mark where today, so many people were like, I, I go to lob every day and I look to make sure sure that my bill, like I wanna see what my billing is. And so he's building out, not a graph, but he's building out so you can see what your month to date mailing cost is on an ongoing basis. You'll be able to see that. And he'll, he's gonna work, they're gonna work on a graph, the developer, but um, it's gonna also springboard us to some cool things because the next thing he's gonna start working on is uh, web hooks. So that will be cool that we'll be able to kind of integrate with Zapier and some other things. And there'll be, a a number of iterations on the webhook. So we'll open some of them up and start to release it more, but that's that's the next thing that that's uh, coming down the pike. So pretty cool. Yeah, if you're listening to this, um, get your free month at lgpass.com and start playing with it because uh, I can tell you, it's the only software made by land investors for land investors at the most, like the there's nothing even close. like we're we're like giving it away compared to everybody else and you've got no monthly fee on your mailings plus 
It's 65 cents for first class mail. Yeah. Black and white. There, there's class. nothing else out there. I'm surprised we don't have more housing people coming to us, Scott. We will. We will. Just a matter of time. We will. All right. All right. Um, well, thanks, everybody. See thanks, everyone Mark. next week. Sure. See you. You'll see, you'll see me Bye. really clear, Mark. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not else? worried. I, I know. <laughs> On your Mac. Well, it'll look good on my Mac, at least. It looks great on my Surface, so I can only imagine. What? I'm confused. Does it look, at, does, we're, we're looking at these uh, links to these new earpieces you have, and they're showing two of them, but you're only wearing one. Are, are we look at the wrong thing here? No, you're looking at it. But see, I don't like to wear the second one. Oh, okay. And so it's actually right here, Mike. And if I plug this in here, it could go in there. And then Mark's going to be like, man, now he's got two of those in. See? Oh, so you yeah. can go Bluetooth or you could go direct. Well, right. But I, I would I would tell you that, well, look, I wanted something. You do what you want. From my own perspective, I wanted something that was rock solid. And I didn't have to worry about Bluetooth breaking yeah. down or dropping. I wanted it to be wired on purpose. I don't care what Tate says about old school. I don't have some big old thing hanging down my ear down there. And then I'm like, it doesn't work now. I have to say that. No, no, no. no. If, if you want to get elected to your local HOA in Tampa, wear the, wear them. <laughs> and on that, I'm going to stop recording. I, I, think that, I think that would have been Naples. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttaub.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.